Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another video. This time we're reviewing yet another AGP Tech uh, MP3 player. So you might have remembered this guy. It's a little bit dusty, sitting on my uh, my dresser. But yeah, uh, we reviewed this guy last time. This guy's not Android based or anything. Uh, but I was actually pretty impressed generally overall with the sound quality on here. So hopefully uh, this iteration will also impress me. The model number on this guy is the T06S. Uh, uh, very catchy, just rolls right off the tongue. This is basically one of these uh, Android MP3 players. It's basically an Android phone without the phone portion. And uh, this specifically retails for uh, just about 90 bucks. This has a quad core processor, has uh, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, flash, sorry. And I think I read somewhere it was like two gigs of uh, RAM on this guy. So like decent specs, four inch screen, not HD. Uh, it is about the 800 by 480 resolution. Uh, but if you're just going to be uh, listening to music, that really doesn't bother me at all. But if you did want to actually use this to like watch videos and stuff, that could be an issue. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, pretty much everything that you could want. The version of Android that runs on this is uh, version 8, I believe. And apparently this model in particular has the Google Play Store pre-installed. So that is already a huge boost up. Uh, so you can pretty much install anything that means. I believe this does do USB on the go. So you can plug in thumb drives to transfer music and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, there you go. It says the model number on the back there. And yeah, so I guess we can just get right into it. Very... Almost plain box, except for it has like this very interesting kind of pattern here. It looks like a 6. <laughs> I guess that's why it's the T06S. But yeah, it says MP3 4 player, sorry, <laughs> AGP tech in this very hard to see kind of gray font. It has some symbols for what it can do, etc., etc. Let's just get into it. Nice box, though. I will say, like, cardboard itself is real nice and yeah we're getting back to the smaller form factor the uh pescu that i reviewed recently that was a i think that was a five inch player this is a four inch so this should be a little bit nicer in the pocket uh oh yeah and it's already this is quite a bit thinner and i can already feel rounded corners we'll, we'll set this aside for a second see what else we have our foam insert we have headphones which i will probably not use these oh they have a volume slider on them that's uh interesting yeah probably won't use these but yeah as an analog volume slider on them that's something i guess if you don't have a pair of headphones i guess these are better than nothing and at least these are the kind that seal in your ears so slightly better sound quality than the uh usually the maracas <laughs> The cheap maraca earbuds that they come with but yeah i'm not going to be using these i'm going to be using my own headphones we have what looks to be like a pretty long usb cord so i'm liking that let's see uh, about a foot and a half so yeah decent length uh usb c thank god uh yeah and we have some goodies we have a screen protector if I can... yeah. there we go yeah, we have a spare screen protector. This is plastic, clearly. Yeah, nice to have. Uh, usually they come with one pre-installed, but uh, that'll be an extra. And what appears to be like a TPU case. So that's really nice, actually. Uh, a lot of these players are like very unique shapes, so it's not like you can just go out and buy a case for them. So the fact that they come with a case, that's really nice. And I spy a camera hole. So this guy has a camera belt in, apparently, I guess. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice nice enough case. Uh, this will yellow with use. Um, this TPU material always does, but it's it's good for like a couple of years until the, the uh, rubber starts getting a little funky. And we have a little manual with manually-like things, so, but it's Android, so I can figure that out. And we have the unit itself here. And it it's, has a decent heft to it. Feels like glass front and back and metal all along the sides. That's really nice. Uh, that is marred a little bit. <laughs> nice design, but then they print, they laser etch like the model number or serial number onto the side there. Mm. 
I would have preferred if that was on the back there and just leave the sides clean. But yeah, we have uh, interesting like silver buttons to contrast with these sides. It appears to be like a reset hole, I guess. We have the camera itself. It does not protrude. It's flush with the back. This is probably going to be... I think it said it was like a couple megapixels, but it's probably not going to be something that you actually want to take pictures or video with. I really like... There is like a chamfer all around. It's It's anodized, the metal... And then a glossy chamfer. That looks really nice. The SD card slot is on the bottom, interestingly enough. And we have a single headphone jack, a little hole maybe for a mic, a speaker hole, has speakers as well, USB-C, and that's about it. So let's just see how good this fits in the case. Yep, fits snugly in the case. Buttons actually work really well in this case. Sometimes these TPU cases are a little too stiff. This works perfectly. I can easily access. Yeah, that that's this is actually a really nicely designed case. It fits exactly. And whole alignment's good. So let's fire this up. I think that's a power button. Yep. So already I'm liking the size on this, and it, it is quite a bit thinner than the other players, so a bit easier on the pocket. Yeah. First time booting up, this might take a little longer. I don't know. I might have to set this up because this does have Google Play, like I, I mentioned, which in which case I'm going to have to actually log in and set all that up. Oh, okay. It just, okay, that works. Google Play uh, could not sign in. I have to actually connect to the internet first. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, we can see here, pretty stock Android. Yeah, I can do all my wallpapery goodness stuff. I'm going to try live wallpapers on this. I really want to get live wallpapers working. Uh, looks like we have uh, Chrome uh, settings, all that stuff, some media apps. Uh, pretty much, yeah. There's an app called Teen Limit. So I guess if you want to get this for a teen, you can limit it for them. Uh, display is a bit dim. Let's just see. Bump that brightness up. That's a bit better. It's still quite a bit dimmer than I'm used to with like a modern smartphone, like flagship with an AMO LED. So outside, this might be a bit of a problem. There is YouTube as well. That was one thing I could not get working on the uh, the last Pexu uh, smartphone. Yeah, I also obviously need to connect to the internet. So I think I'm going to actually do that. But uh, let's just fire up the camera just to see. Actually, you know what? As much as I was uh, saying the camera is going to be crap, this actually looks better than I thought it would. It doesn't look like great still, but it looks better than I thought it would. <laughs> I still am probably not going to use this camera, but I guess like in an emergency or if you just want to take a quick snapshot, you definitely could. There is a panorama mode too. Interesting. So this must have, yeah, as a... Uh, an accelerometer built in so you can do auto rotation i guess if we just open something that you can rotate yep so it has an accelerometer built in so great yeah let me uh set this up i actually have to enter my wi-fi credentials set up the play store all that crap uh i'll be back with you guys on I'll, I'll load like a, a ton of music on here too and give this a, a good use while i'm at it and then i'll run through a quick demo for you guys Okay, so it's been quite a while, actually, probably closer to about three weeks with this guy. And uh, I guess we'll start with the positives. I love the size of this. This is like an ideal size. It's quite small. Uh, give me one sec to grab uh, things to compare it to. So like I was saying, this is actually pretty small. I'll take it out of the case to give it a bit fairer of a competition, a comparison. Yeah, the case doesn't really add much, uh, like sizing to it it protects it pretty well it makes it very easy to grip because this is the kind of rubbery tpu sort of material but yeah even without the case it's even slightly smaller compared to like a modern smartphone this is my z flip uh, 3 and when i unfold it uh, this phone is going to be this phone is going to be roughly the size of like a modern smartphone it's significantly smaller you can see there it's only when i fold my phone in half that it's uh, kind of almost comparable in size, actually. Compared to the last MP3 player I re reviewed, the um, Pexu, which has a 5-inch screen as opposed to the 4-inch model on here, it's still significantly smaller. A lot easier on the pocket, I will say. And it's even thinner as well, by like a little bit. 
and comparing it to something more within the range. Uh, I have an iTouch here. Uh, this model, I think it's the fifth gen. Uh, it's even smaller than that, though it's not quite as thin. I will say the iTouch is about almost half the thickness there. But in terms of like the footprint, uh, it's definitely shorter and about the same width. So yeah, in terms of sizing, I love this guy. It's fantastic. And uh, another definite plus, let me, let me just put it back into its case. Another plus that I really like is I have live wallpapers working. This is running uh, Android 8.1, I believe. Uh, same version that this guy's running, but this guy seems, well, it definitely has the Google Play Store here. I can show you guys, yeah, it'll boot up. I can install anything on the Play Store on here, and that includes live wallpapers. You can see, see here I have my favorite 8-bit uh, scrolling live wallpaper running. Runs perfectly. Uh, yeah, and uh, any other apps, if you wanted to sideload apps, I... Everything that I've tried runs on here. I haven't had any issues, so that's definitely fantastic. There was a small caveat. I tried to load up um, OneDrive, and it kept crashing when I was trying to log into my account. It ended up being Chrome uh, was such an old version. I needed to update it within the uh, Play Store, and then when I tried logging in on OneDrive, then it worked. And sort of you might be seeing a, a major problem that I've kind of run into the screen, I keep it on like half brightness so that it doesn't chew through the battery. Even on full brightness here, I'll turn it all the way up, it's better. This will, will eat through the battery faster and it's not actually like significantly brighter. Uh, when you go out in bright sunlight, the backlight's just not bright enough, honestly. Uh, yeah, I would have preferred kind of the screen, the quality itself is fine. It's just like the brightness. I don't know what it is. It's just maybe they use like a, a lower end screen or something. The brightness does not get very bright on this, uh, which does kind of stink. And like I said, when you turn up that backlight brightness, uh, it'll chew through your battery. And that sort of brings me to kind of the biggest negative on this guy is the battery life is mediocre, if, if I'm being honest. So this guy, when I ran like a, a test, I think I was getting like about 15 hours of Bluetooth audio. So I'd be uh, listening to music. I would just set it on shuffle and just leave it play. And yeah, on average, I was getting about 15 hours transmitting to Bluetooth headphones. This guy, same situation, you know, actually the same exact playlist that I had on shuffle and everything uh just with the screen off on shuffle transmitting over bluetooth i was getting about an hour of playback meant a drop in in battery percentage by about 15 percent which if you calculate that that means then the battery life you would extrapolate to somewhere around like six or seven hours continuous so let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say if you don't turn on the screen and like keep you know, navigating, changing tracks, all that kind of stuff that consumes more power. If you just leave it on shuffle and let it play through, you would probably get around seven hours of battery life uh, using Bluetooth. That's not so great, uh, if I'm being honest. Now, you can actually use wired headphones. There is a headphone jack on this. And I haven't tried that long term, but I'm sure that that would be a little bit more efficient than transmitting over Bluetooth. That would probably get you to at least the 10 hour mark, in my opinion, which still actually isn't that great. They rate the battery in this guy to be 1500 milliamp hours, and I believe the PEX suit was 2500. So this battery is almost double the size, the capacity of this guy. So yeah, this theoretically not counting like the CPU power and that kind of stuff. Theoretically, this is probably going to have about half the runtime of the Pexu, which is a bit disappointing. I can kind of understand it because of just how small this guy is. So yeah, there's kind of no getting around that. This is not you know, a, a long runtime MP3 player. The camera, I'd noted it was better than I thought. <laughs> Let, let me just fire it up. Where's the camera? Here. So yeah, the camera was, it looks better than, than I thought, but uh, it's still not great. And I believe it's a five megapixel sensor, so it's not like really low resolution. I think it's really the optics that let it down. You can see tiny little pinhole camera. Uh, 
I guess it's okay that they included it. I mean, it's not necessary. I will never use this as a camera, maybe in an emergency if I had to uh, take a picture of like an accident or something. And for some reason, I didn't have my phone or my battery was dead on my phone. Then I might use this. But yeah, I kind of wish they could have just done away with the camera and not use a camera at all and uh, just have a slightly bigger battery. I, I would have preferred that. Uh, because that's sort of the Achilles heel of this guy. I just wish the battery life were better. If it were at least 10 plus hours, then I would be happier. Uh, but yeah, clocking in in like six or seven hours with Bluetooth continuous runtime is sort of meh for me. Uh, I would I would seriously carry this every single day and use it if the battery life were just a little bit better. But yeah, uh, otherwise, um, another kind of downside of this was uh, Wi-Fi. I think wireless in general, it's not too strong of a signal. Uh, Wi-Fi, when I'm in this room, I'm on the other side of the house given like probably about a good like 40 feet away from the router and through multiple walls. So a lot of other devices when I connect to Wi-Fi, they'll only have like one or two bars, but usually the, consist the connection is consistent. This guy, when I try to connect to it in this room, a lot of times it, it it, it'll fail connecting to Wi-Fi, or even if it does, it'll drop out and uh, disconnect pretty easily while I'm in the room that I'm currently filming in. So that means that I need to kind of be within like the same room as the router to get a consistent Wi-Fi signal on here so that I could like browse or watch videos. So the Wi-Fi, you know, connection quality, not so great on this guy. And even Bluetooth, uh, if if I'm in like a non-crowded area and I'm listening with this in my pocket and Bluetooth headphones, the connection was fine. I noticed though when I went out in public and I had uh, true wireless earbuds where there are two earbuds that connect to each other and then it connects wirelessly um, through one of the earbuds to the device, there was a number of times where this, the audio dropped out for like half a second or maybe a second max on either one, both, or the other earbud. And it happened not super often, but often enough that I'm beginning to think maybe the wireless design of like the antennas or, or it could possibly be they did a lot of optimizing on this guy to get the battery life better because it's sort of the battery is fairly small on this guy. So maybe they decrease the transmission power or then like receive power strength. So there was a number of times where I've had like issues in general with wireless on this guy. So if you wanted to get this to, you know, stream audio over like a network or something, just make sure that you're, you're like relatively close, preferably kind of in the same room as the, the signal source. So your router or whatever, uh, wireless device that you're trying to connect to this guy. Uh, it's nice that you have that ability of, um, connecting that it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that, but it seems kind of, not implemented as well as I would have liked. I would like to just be able to, you know, open up Pandora or whatever in any room on my house and just start streaming. But the the issue is there's a number of connection issues I've had, especially if you have this in your pocket and you're walking around through multiple rooms. A lot of times it'll end up having to buffer or it'll just disconnect you from the network entirely. So yeah, it's sort of not so great. Uh, but if you have all your MP3 stored on an SD card, that works flawlessly. So I have a 64 gig card in here. This is a 16 gig player. So you can fit quite a number of MP3 files or flax or whatever else you want. And this will play them excellently. No issues with that. Uh, I believe they said their max capacity was 128 gigs. I'm absolutely sure that you could probably stick like a much larger card in here, like 512 gigs up to, I'm sure. Uh, it's just a matter of um, what the formatting on the card is, and maybe there might be a file limit. Pretty much my entire music library uh, compressed to like 320 kbps, stored on this card and popped it in, uh, and within Double Twist, the music app that I like using, uh, this will, let's just back out of this, oops. So yeah, if I go into settings here, uh, I can just select the storage location is, yeah, the 64 gig micro SD card. You can select the internal if you don't have an SD card or you don't have that much music, but yeah, uh, that works fantastically. 
And another thing I would have liked to have seen, Android players in general don't have this. So one thing the Sony player does right is it has the transport controls on the side so you don't need to turn the screen on to control it. I don't, I would love, just put two extra buttons on the side for like track forward, track uh, back, and maybe like a center one for like play pause. Uh, in addition to the volume buttons and the power button, then that'll just bring, that'll double the, the number of physical buttons on here, but it would just make it so much more usable. So I don't have to turn on the screen because like I said, the battery's not so great. So every time I have to turn on the screen just to, to skip a track or to, to select a new song or whatever, that, that'll just eat through batteries. So just have extra transport controls on the side that, that would make this like almost perfect in my opinion. I guess we can do a quick demo. So like I said, uh, everything that kind of runs on every other device, Android device I have, will run here. YouTube runs fine, provided you're within range of Wi-Fi, as I mentioned pre previously. Uh, and I've even installed, um, yeah, uh, a couple apps. I've installed Aether SX2. I'm going to actually run a quick test. That'll probably be a separate video. Uh, this does, I, I was wrong in the initial unboxing. I thought this had a quad core processor. This is actually an octa core processor and it's a arm. I believe it's an arm cortex, a something or another, uh, but it, it seems to be fairly powerful. And I think it has like two gigs of Ram. So I kind of wanted to see if this will run PS2 games. Uh, I kind of have my doubts just because that's, you still need a pretty beefy, uh, smartphone in order to run ps2 like at full speed native so this might not work out i installed an app for connecting my um my sony xm3 headphones and that just boots up just fine it runs i can connect to them i can configure them on here so this is pretty much exactly like my phone just smaller and uh slightly more convenient in certain situations one thing that I noticed was interesting, if you install apps from the Play Store, it'll add two of the icon on. So you can see here, one is on the desktop and I hid one in a folder. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. And if you delete one of the icons, it deletes both of them and un uninstalls the app. So I don't know why it, that only happens when I install it from the Play Store. Uh, easy way to get around that, yeah, just hide the second icon. Uh, if you install the APA, if you like download the APK from a computer and then transfer it over to here, then install it, it doesn't do that. It'll only show one icon. So yeah, uh, don't, don't know what's going on with that, but whatever. Uh, additionally, so the thing about video on here, uh, because the screen is not even HD, it, it'll limit your video quality to below like 800 by 480 or something resolution. So even within TubeMate, uh, I can't download HD video or view HD video on this display. It just won't work. Uh, cancel. I do have, I downloaded my channel trailer, so we'll fire that up and uh, check out the onboard speaker while we're at it. Yeah, so I mean, it works. Speaker's plenty loud enough, I will say. So yeah, speaker's plenty loud enough. The screen is... It's okay. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go back to watching video on like non-HD screens anymore, so I probably will not use this as a video player. I guess in a pinch it'll work and it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I've plenty of other devices that are much better at playing video, so I'm going to stick to those. Uh, I'm going to just use this for audio, pretty much. And I planned on using this for streaming audio, but that limitation of um, the Wi-Fi strength not being so great, I think I will relegate the Pexu for, uh, for streaming audio instead. The Wi-Fi on that was significantly stronger and better. Um, so yeah, this will just be sort of a uh, local library stored on SD card. Um, but I, I really do like the size of this. This fits so much better in the pocket than the Paxu. Uh, with the Paxu, I can only have this in my pocket. I, I can't have anything else. With this guy, I can have 
my my phone in the in the same pocket and no issues carrying both of them it doesn't feel awkward or heavy or anything like that but yeah overall i think this is a decent deal if you have like a large library that you just want to stuff on an sd card and you just want to use it to listen to local music uh it's kind of pushing a bit anything else wi-fi it does have it, the ability but it's sort of not so great I would not use this as a camera or a video player or anything like that. Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention. Because this is Android, you can actually use this like like any phone. You can have calculator apps, you can have um uh you can use it as like a sound recorder if you wanted to. Uh the FM radio actually works decently well. Uh let me So yeah, it's going to be copyrighted music, but uh just play it real quick. So yeah, playing some Linkin Park there. That works just fine. I, I'd scanned it. I picked up pretty much all the uh, stations in the area. Uh, so that's sort of a, an extra bonus that a lot of phones won't do for some reason. Uh, additionally, one thing I like this, the Pexu did not do. Um, this does not have uh, USB on the go. This guy does. So I can plug a thumb drive with an adapter directly into the phone and it'll pop up as you know a, a file uh, it'll pop up as like a third drive that's attached and you can use that to directly copy music on and off the dr external drive onto the SD or the internal and it's fantastic. That's pretty much the most convenient way. You could use wireless uh, apps that'll allow you to like share music between your phone and here to download uh, in order to transfer it. Those, I don't see any reason why those wouldn't work. I just like having a drive um, that plugs straight in and that's the fastest method for me. I'll just dump all my music on a thumb drive. And you can use this as an alarm clock. So if I, let's see, how did I do that? If, if I scroll down on the um, the notification shade, if you click the, the date here, I believe it will open, there you go. It opens an alarm clock and you can set an alarm, use this as your alarm clock basically, or a timer or stopwatch, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just like any other Android device, so that's really cool. Um, let's just close all these apps that we opened. Uh, so yeah, uh, do I think this is worth it? If you're heavily invested in sort of the Android ecosystem and you want to get like a small phone-like device, maybe for exercise or uh, using outdoors and you don't want to take your main phone and possibly damage it, I think this is a pretty good choice. It's basically a phone without the phone. It's basically an iTouch, uh, just Androidified, more flexible in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, uh, pricing on this, it's about 90 bucks, like I said, so not actually dirt cheap. There are devices that are a little bit cheaper than this guy. But the specs generally are a little bit worse, and a lot of times the super cheap Android devices, they may or may not have the Play Store and be able to run certain apps um, because of that. I like the fact that this has Play built right in. I was able to log in, no issues, install all my apps. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so I'm really liking this, guys. Just I wish the battery... Maybe if they made it slightly thicker, just slightly, and just up that battery just a little bit, or um, maybe limit the CPU power a little bit if you're just playing music or something like that. I'm going to have to look into that. But yeah, like under 10 hours of battery life nowadays is sort of disappointing, if I'm being honest. Uh, but other than that, like build quality and general usefulness and like capability of this, this is definitely up there. I'm really happy with that. Build quality especially is like really good too. Um, and I love the case. <laughs> Definitely a very interesting device. But I would like to see uh, maybe if they can bring the price down a little bit in line with um, some of the other models that I've, I've looked at that are like around the $60, $70 mark. I think that would be the sweet spot. If they could uh, drop, you know, drop the price on this just by a little bit. Remove the camera because we don't need it. And that'll save them, you know, I don't know. A couple bucks or something and uh, bring the price down on this guy but keep pretty much all the other features the same um, I think that would make this a must-have and even even at this price point I I think it's it's a fair value for what you're getting and this will probably end up being an EDC for me an everyday carry I'll probably throw this in a backpack and just leave it there and charge it up whenever I need it and use it whenever I need it so anyway yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I will see you in the next one Bye.
Real quick addendum, I actually forgot something actually very important. So, well, there's, uh, in most Android systems, usually when you go to, like, system, when you click certain buttons a certain number of time, you can unlock uh, extra features. For instance, if I hit About Tablet, and then I go in, if I click the build number, like, four times, it opens this factory test mode. And I can test everything or reset it. And there's an aging mode. I guess that runs whatever. Um, if I go into that, for instance, it'll run sort of this picture thing that slowly moves. And I guess it's they leave it running for a certain amount of time, make sure it still works. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Additionally to that, um, I think it was, yeah, if you click that, um, the Android version, you can kind of get this Easter egg. Uh, and was it model or CPU model? one of these yeah i can enter uh engineering mode and actually test like the wireless and everything that's interesting but if i hit model uh if you hit it a few times i already did so it's saying no need uh if you hit it like four times it'll bring up another menu option in system called developer options and here i can go in and adjust like a lot of different features most important for me is i can actually adjust uh, the Bluetooth settings, I can change the streaming codec. So here I have default. I can actually set this to transmit um, a AAC, APTX, or LDAC. So that's really cool. So I can force it into the higher quality modes as long as the device I'm trying to connect it to has those modes. So for instance, I can do APTX HD, bam. Uh, so yeah, if I was connected to a device, it would actually change that. Uh, it's set there, so next time I, I try to connect to a device, it'll try to use that codec. Uh, I can even set the bit rate, um, how many you know bits per sample. Uh, I can change whether it's um, best effort or optimized for audio quality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, uh, getting into this developer option menu, I've been trying it on all the other players. This is the only one that I was actually able to get into here and uh, to change everything. I think that's that makes it really useful in my opinion uh, because I can then tweak all the Bluetooth settings and whatnot. I know I just thought I'd add that in case you get this player and you want to also do the same thing. Uh, that's how to enter that developer menu.